Here's a quick video to walk through the mastery quiz solutions and we're going to find the solutions for the first quiz that we took. We have 10 problems. We have to complete this in 15 minutes or less. So let's go through them. The first one is a simple addition problem. So let's just do our addition. Uh, we can add it any way we want. I'll just add it the old fashioned way. We got six, um, <coughs> six plus eight is 14, carry one. Uh, I'll go one and nine, so that's 10 and then 14. So that's our first one. The next one is subtracting. 995 minus 296. And we are going to, looks like we're going to need to borrow. So we'll borrow one from the nine. And then we have 15 here. So 15 minus 6 is a 9. And we have an 8. We need to borrow that to be able to subtract the 9. So that's 18 minus 9 is another 9. And then I have 8 minus 2 is 6. So here's our answer for the next problem. Let's take a look at our uh, next two problems. We're going to multiply. Uh, 66 times 56 and our standard algorithm uh, we'll do the sixes 6 times 6 is 36 carry a 3 and then 36 plus 3 is 39 and then now we get in, we're going to multiply by 5 5 times 6 is 30 carry 3 another 30 and that's 33 so we'll add we have a 6 a 9 a 6 and a 3 so that's our answer for the multiplication. Now we have a division problem and uh, find the quotient and any remainders. So we'll do long division. Uh, 12, 864 divided by 7. Uh, 7 into 1 does not go. 7 into 12 happens one time. And then we get a 5. When we subtract, we'll drop the 8 down. 7 into 58. Uh, so 7 and 7 is 49, 7 into 8 is 56, so I got 2 left over. I'll drop the 6 down, uh, 7 into 26, uh, 3, I think it's 21, and then we have 5, 4, um, so that's not quite 56, so I think we'll just go with 7, then that's 49. And then we subtract, um, so 14 minus 9 is 5, so I think we got a remainder 5. So our quotient is 1835, and then our remainder is 5 out of 7. Okay, so that's our division problem. Uh, the next one is a rounding off to the nearest hundreds. So this is our hundreds position. I want to look at the number to the right of that, and if that number is 5 or higher, we're going to bring this up. So we're going to add 1 to the 8, and then everything else will go to 0. So this is rounded off to the nearest hundreds. The next is our order of operations. Um, PEMDAS, so P, E, and then the M and a D technically go on the same level, so that's a little tricky. So multiplication and division, and then addition and subtraction, same level. So according to this, uh, the parentheses goes first. So here's the parentheses. So let's rewrite everything over, just to be safe. 8 times 9 divided by square root of 36 minus 14 minus 7 plus, and now in here, oops, this is divide. Uh, in here is 7 minus 9, or 17 minus 9, and I think that's going to be an 8. Actually, the square root is kind of like a parentheses as well, and so that we should probably take that down. It's actually technically an exponent. So 36, the square root of 36 is 6, because 6 times 6 is 36. So let's rewrite everything over again. Uh, 8 times 9 divided by 6 minus 14 divided by 7 plus 8. Alright, 
So multiplication and division in order. So uh, 8 times 9 is probably what I want to deal with first. That's 72. Uh, and then I can actually deal with this division now if I want to or do it later. But let's deal with it now. Uh, again, parentheses, exponents, multiplication, division, addition, subtraction. So we're still going through the multiplication division. Uh, this is a 2, 14 divided by 7. And then now I do this division. Uh, and I think this is going to be uh, 6. So just to make sure, 72 divided by 6. Oops, it's going to be 12, I mean. So this is a 6 and then a 2. So that is a 12 minus 2 plus 8. Uh, 12 minus 2. Now addition and subtraction, remember, in in the same order line. So this is um, 10 minus 2, or 12 minus 2 is 10 plus 8, and so this is 18. Okay? Alright, looking good so far. That's number 6. Let's go to number 7, multiplying fractions. So when we're multiplying fractions, uh, since we're multiplying, we can just multiply across. Uh, but if you have a set of fractions like this, and if you look at the numerators and denominators, I would try to cancel things out first. So let's see if we can cancel things out. The thing that stands out really quickly is the 5 and the 15, and that cancels out. So let's see if there's anything else that cancels out. There's a 9 and a 3, so this becomes a 1, this becomes a 3. And then now there's a 6 and a 3. So let's cancel that out. So this just becomes a 1. This becomes a 2. And now the 8. Let's cancel the 2 out. And then we get a 4. And then let's cancel the 4 and the 32 out. So this becomes 1. So what do we have here? Uh, we can probably just multiply it out, but let's just rewrite everything over to see what we have canceled out after all that. So we have a 1 and an 8. The 5 went away, so that's a 1. And then the 6 went all away, so that's just a 1 and a 1. And then we have the 8 eventually became a 1, and the 15 eventually became a 1. So if you multiply this out, you get 1, 8. All right. So a little bit more complicated than multiplying fractions is adding or subtracting fractions, and it turns out that we're going to need common denominators. So one way to find common denominators is to multiply 27 and 6 together. Um, but that's not necessarily the easiest or maybe not the, not the most efficient way of doing this. So a more efficient way is to think about what you need to multiply by to have the common denominator. So one of the things that probably would be important to do is to break down 27 and see what that's equal to. I think this is a 3 and a 9, and then a 9 breaks down into a 3 and a 3. So you got 3 times 3 times 3 is 27. 6 breaks down to 2 and a 3, and then that's it. So I have 3, 3, 3 here, and then 2 and a 3. So I think the only thing that's missing here is a 2. So let me rewrite this whole thing over again. Uh, we have 7 over 27 plus 1 over 6. Now, according to this, I have 3 3's and a 2 and a 3. So all the 3's are already in here. The only thing I would be missing here is a 2. So I'll multiply the top and the bottom by 2. That saves me from multiplying 6 times 27. That might be too much. Now, on the other hand, a 6, I have a 2 and a 3. I have one of the 3's already there, so I'm missing another couple of 3's. So I think that's going to be a 9, 3 times 3. So I'm going to multiply this by 9. And um, I don't know if that was a little tricky, but... Uh, that this is one way to do it. Um, so now that we have this, I would multiply 2 times 27 
and that is a 14 carry one that's four five that's 54 and I should if I did this correctly when I multiply 6 times 9 I should also get the same denominator which is 54 so that looks good so my denominator is 54 now I multiply 2 times 7 and I would multiply 1 times 9 uh, when you add fractions you need the common denominator and then you just add the numerators you don't multiply or add the denominators they're common and you just leave it the same so you would add the numerators uh, this is going to be 23 <coughs> and then it's important to be able to reduce if you can so 54 breaks up into combination of threes and twos but 23 looks like it doesn't break down any so you can't reduce this anymore and that's the thing about finding this is called the least common denominator 54 is the least common denominator we could have found another denominator if we multiply 27 times 6 but that would be a larger number to deal with and then when we deal with larger numbers it'll it'll be more difficult to simplify if you have to so this is one way to do it um, if you have issues with this way I suggest to check out YouTube or Khan Academy about adding uh, and subtracting fractions. Let's take a look at our last two problems. Write the ratio as a fraction in lowest terms. So this is 5 feet to 32 inches. Now the tricky thing about this is that we want to go compare it in inches. So we want to go inches to inches. So we want to convert 5 feet to something inches so there's 12 inches in a foot and then we want to multiply this by 5 feet and then when the feet would cancel and then now you just have 5 times 12 inches so that's 60 so our ratio is 60 inches to 32 inches. So we want to write this as a fraction. Um, that would be 60 over 32. Um, now we want this in lowest terms. So let's divide out. I think I can divide out by 2. So divide this by 2, I get 30 divide this by 2 I'm going to get uh, 16 it looks like I can still divide by 2 uh, divide this by 2 I get 15 divide this by 2 I get 8 and so now I can't divide by 2 any longer because uh, the top number is an odd number so I think this must be the the final answer okay our last problem is uh, 3 eighths we want to write this in the percent so when we do a, a division we're going to divide 3 divided by 8 and then to do that uh, since 8 does not go into 3 as a whole number we're going to start introducing decimals so we're going to need a decimal and then we're going to change the decimal to a percent so let's uh, do a 0 there 8 goes into 3 it does not 8 goes into 30, uh, let's say three, 3 times, and that would be 20, um, 24, and then that would be a 6. And then now we need to regenerate more zeros here. So uh, 8 does not go into 6, but 8 goes into 60, I'd say 7 times, that would be 56 and then we get a 4 and then let's do one more uh, drop a 4 down and this is going to be a 5 so 0.375 uh, is, is a decimal but we want to write this as a percent so to do this as a percent we're going to multiply this by 1 or 100 percent and so the percent sign will stay and we will multiply something by 100 we move it two decimal places 
37.5%. Okay, so that is our final answer. We have hit the 15 minute mark. And so that is a quick overview of the, of the quiz. I hope um, you can use this to study and review and try out some different problems, look at your past quizzes, and see if you can nail down your next one. Good luck.